right back out to the frontier. And I did a little scout for Custer. He didn't know much about Indians. He was heading out to Kansas, and I scouted for him. He offered me a job scouting for him for the 7th Cavalry. But by then, I had already been offered a job hunting meat for the Kansas Pacific Railroad. They said they would pay me $500 a month. And that was big money in 1867. $500 a month to kill 12 buffalo a day to feed the men who were building the railroad. They gave me a, a little buckboard and a couple of mules and a driver named Scotty. He was a butcher. We'd go out, shoot 12, 14 buffalo in a day. He was pretty good. He could rip a hide off a of buffalo in no time. He'd take the rump and the tongue. And we'd sometimes take the head if it was a particularly nice one, have it mounted. You'd, if you take a train out west, you go through the Kansas Pacific Railroad there, you'll see that all those stations have mounted buffalo heads. I shot all of them. <laughs> yeah, well, we hunt a lot of meat. Scotty loaded up the wagon, we'd ride back, and all the railroad men would say, Buffalo Bill, Buffalo Bill, never missed and never will. Always aims and shoots to kill, and the company pays his Buffalo Bill. That's how I got my name, <laughs> Buffalo Bill. Those railroad men, they were pretty good. You know, I've heard people say that I had something to do with the near extinction of the buffalo. Now, I know when Lewis and Clark went through in 1805, they calculated there were from 40 to 60 million buffalo in the West. Now, I hunted buffalo for 18 months for the Kansas Pacific Railroad, and in that time, I calculated that I had killed four, four, well, as I get older, I can't remember stuff. I go off on tangents and can't come back and all sorts of things. 4,280 buffalo is what I killed in that 18 months. Now, you can't tell me that that little number had anything to do with the near extinction of 60 million buffalo. <laughs> i tell you who did, though. It was the hide hunters. I hunted 1867, 1868. About 1870, 71, the tanneries in England and Germany found out how to tan buffalo hide commercially. And what they ended up with was a really durable hide, a lot better than cow hide, available in much longer lengths. Back in the east, all up and down those rivers, whew, not as hot as it is here, but up and down those rivers, they were building all these factories. Industrial rivers. Every river had a big paddle wheel outside, and there'd be a shaft running down through the ceiling of these factories, and every few feet there'd be a pulley. And from those pulleys led down a buffalo hide belt. So the drill presses, the lathes, the looms, the spinning machines, the mills, of all the machines that they used to build products of the industrial age. Buffalo hide became a high demand item and it went up to three bucks a hide. Now it's possible for a man to go out, buy himself a rolling block or a nice sharps rifle, sit back at a thousand yards, just shoot into a herd. Now they didn't bother picking target, they just shoot into a herd and plow, they just plug away until the buffalo ran and then there'd be some dead ones laying around. They'd strip the hides off, leave the carcasses to rot on the prairie. That's what causes the near extinction of the buffalo, it was those hide hunters. Now, there were a few good hide hunters, I had to admit. A fellow named Bat Masterson was a hide hunter for a while. He's a sports writer now in New York. There was a another fellow named Billy Dixon was a friend of that master's. Two of them were down in Texas at a place called Adobe Walls. It was a second battle, actually, of Adobe Walls. There was 28 buffalo hunters in this little adobe building, this trading post. Lucky guys, though, because that night, one of the Vegas, one of the roof poles broke and cracked, and like a shotgun blast, woke these fellows up. Two of the buffalo hunters went out and slept in a wagon, but the rest of them went to work to repair this Vega to try to keep the roof up. First light, Juan Parker, Isatai, and the Comanche War Party attacked. Killed those two fellas sleeping out in the wagon instantly, but they fought their way up to the door where they were chased off by six shooters by the buffalo hunters. Juan Parker, Isatai, and a lot of the other Comanches retreated 
it up to a ridge about 1,500 yards away. Billy Dixon only had a 40 caliber sharp, so he knew he couldn't reach that distance with that little 47. But Buddy has had a 50 caliber. He knew he could reach that far with. He put a bullet up there and knocked it. Comanche is sitting next to Pond Parker off his horse. Pretty much ended the battle. Now, he won a Medal of Honor, not for that, but he was another civilian scout like me who was a Medal of Honor winner. Billy Dixon was a good high hunter, but most of them really weren't worth the thing. I, I'm always reminded of one named Crooked Nose Jack McCall. Nasty little high hunter he was. He was in the dead wood with my old pal Wild Bill in there. He was playing poker. This dirty high hunter snuck up behind him and put a bullet in the back of his head, the dirty coward. That's the way high hunters are. That's how I feel about high hunters. Here's a song about high hunters. This guy didn't enjoy it out in the frontier like I did. Oh, oh, oh. 